Step 1. Introduction. The content for this audio tour is selected from a 2000 essay titled The Ceramic Art of Onda, written by Andrew L. Maskey. Mr. Maskey specializes in Asian ceramics and ceramics inspired by Asian traditions. He is Assistant Professor of Art History at the University of Kentucky. In 1927, the Japanese folk art theorist, Yanagi Sotsu, entered a ceramics shop in the town of Kurume in central Kyushu Island. Scanning the stock, he was surprised to find wares which, although apparently new, displayed characteristics of old, handmade pieces dating from the pre-industrial Japan of decades earlier. Confirming that the pieces were indeed of contemporary manufacture, Yanagi asked the source of the solid, subdued tableware. He was told that they came from a village near the town of Hita, about 50 miles away. Eager to document another example of surviving traditional craft, Yunagi immediately decided to visit the birthplace of the pieces, a potting community called Onda Sarayama. What he found there confirmed his ideas about the traditional nature of ceramic production required to create the items he saw in the shop. The account Yanagi Sotsu wrote ushered in a new era in the history of the ceramics known as Ondoware. Production of Ondoware began around the year 1705, when the ceramists specialist, Yanasi San Uman, was sent from the pottery village of Koshiwara to the mountains near the Shogun's governmental outpost of Hita. After locating suitable stoneware clay, Yanase and his family settled in what is now Onda Sarayama and began making utilitarian ceramics to supply the needs of the surrounding area. Taxes from the sale of early Ondaware also provided income from the Shogunal representatives who were charged with reporting to the central government on developments throughout the island of Kyushu. Underwear flourished, and Yanasi found it necessary to train other villagers as potters to meet demand. By the early 20th century, the number of potting families in Sarayama had become stabilized at around 10, although until the post-war period, such households farmed as well as made pottery. Stop 2. Sake Bottle. O.N. 1110. Little is known about the character of Ondoware during its first century of production. It is thought that the Sarayama kilns made items common at other utilitarian stoneware workshops, such as sake bottles, jars of various shapes and sizes, and perhaps the mortables with serrated interiors known as suribachi. Production of tableware, like plates and dishes, is less certain since areas throughout Kyushu and elsewhere generally used Arita porcelain for food service. In keeping with their humble, utilitarian function, Onda ceramics did not feature identifying kiln marks until well into the 20th century. Adding to the problem of identification is the fact that it is extremely difficult to distinguish between early Ondawares and their cousins created at nearby Koshiwara. Moreover, because of the small amount of usable land in Sarayama, homes and kilns have had to be rebuilt on top of their early predecessors, making archaeological investigation of earlier production impossible. Stop 3. Large Bowl with Tobikana and Hakame. O.N. 728. The use of white clay slip as a surface coating for a pot came to Japan from Korea at the end of the 16th century. Clay slip decoration continues to be used at Onda and is usually applied by dipping, brushing, or daubing. A pattern in slip can also be made by wiping with the fingers or by chatter marking the partially dry slip in a technique called tobikana. Pouring and dripping of glaze, nagashi gusuri, is another method of decoration with early roots that continues to be popular among collectors of Onda ceramics. Since the time of Yanagi's visit, the ten potting families of Onda Sarayama have staunchly preserved most of the aspects of their ceramic production that so impressed him. Because of the limited space in the mountain hamlet, and as well as the scarcity of natural materials, only one son per potting household is allowed to carry on the tradition 
and no potters are allowed to move in from elsewhere. Clay is still dug from the traditional source near the village and is crushed by the water-powered pounders that were common in Kyushu pottery villages 100 years ago. Onda is the only place in Japan that they have remained in constant use. Glazes are made from readily available raw materials, while decorative techniques continue to be limited to those in use at the time of Yanagi's visit. Shapes are generally functional in nature, although the largest pieces, jars and chargers, are now used almost exclusively as objects for display. Pieces are fired in wood-burning Noborigama climbing kilns, descended from those introduced by Korean potters in the late 16th century. The sole 20th century innovation has been the introduction of the electrically powered potter's wheel, now used by most of the craftsmen. Stop 4. Green Pitcher, ON750. White and Green White Pitcher, ON769. Further affirmation of the value of Onda production came in 1954, when the famous English potter Bernard Leach visited Sariyama, spending 20 days there learning traditional slip techniques from the potters and in turn teaching them his own technique of pulling handles for pitchers. The Japanese media gave considerable coverage to Leach's visit, which helped to foster the folk craft boom of the next several decades. As a result of the heightened visibility of underwear products, the pottery was designated an intangible cultural asset in 1970. The resulting prosperity ultimately enabled the potting families of Sariyama to turn their attention to full-time folk ceramics production, a situation that continues today. Stop 5. Large Lidded Jar ON 855. Do virtually all Onda ceramics made today fall within firmly established boundaries of shape, glaze, and decoration? Undoubtedly, yes. Within those parameters, however, there is endless room for creativity. Splashed glazing, for example, is infinitely variable and allows the craftsman to vividly express both his own energy and the energy inherent in the materials and techniques he uses directly on the surface of the pot. Moreover, both the topikana chattering technique and the brushed slip hakame decoration can be applied very regularly or in a much freer manner, communicating either great control and concentration or carefree abandonment to chance. Stop 6. Set of 5 octagonal plates, ON1075 through ON1079. As for the shapes of the ceramics themselves, the generous potting of the high-quality clay creates pieces that are sturdy and stable. They almost beg to be used, held, and handled. The stoneware body conducts heat moderately without becoming too hot when used for food or drink. The simple shapes are unobtrusive, and the soft colored mottled glazes provide a muted background suitable for a wide variety of comestibles. In spite of the importance of group identity in their culture, the Japanese have long tended to keep their eating utensils personal. Onda ceramics and other Japanese stoneware connect very strongly with this tradition, since no piece is exactly like another. Moreover, through the process of use, the identity of the owner slash user and their ceramic piece grows closer together, as the possessor comes to feel that the possession in some way reflects him or herself. Stop 7. Large Plate with Tobikana, ON783. In a sense, Onda Sariyama is a place caught in a time slip. The potters there have made remarkably few concessions to modernization. The small size and isolation of the village have enabled the elders to control the course of production for decades. Had Sariyama gone undiscovered by Yanagi, the production of underwear might well have died out, or at least changed considerably. It should not be concluded, however, that Yanagi Sotsu redirected the course of Onda, 
Rather, by finding value in what the potters were already doing, he reaffirmed the value of the established tradition. Onda ceramics fulfill all the necessary requirements of the best utilitarian wares. They are made by well-trained, highly skilled potters working in their traditional mode, using materials found near at hand, using techniques that have been passed down from father to son for generations. The works are straightforward and honest and combine solid and restrained shapes with a variety of decorative methods executed in a limited palette of colored glazes. Examples of underwear lend an air of quiet repose to their surroundings, from large pieces displayed in the corner of a room to smaller items gracing the kitchen table or cupboard. Underwear reflects an ancient but living tradition, and that tradition is palpably communicated in every plate, jar, and teacup.